Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks. Today we're doing questionnaire design. Now, a bit of a funny topic this one. It doesn't really feel like math, but it is an important part of statistics. If you watch the statistics intro video, I talked about the four steps that are typically involved in statistics. So step one was asking a question like, how much does it rain in this place? Or how tall are people here? Step two though is collect the data. So this is where you go around and actually ask people questions and find out how much it rains here or how tall they are or whatever it is. Now there are a few pitfalls, some common mistakes a lot of people make when they design questions. So designing a questionnaire is actually something you need to give a bit of thought to and make sure you get it right. There are, you know, different math tests will ask about questionnaire design sometimes and they'll say, give an example question for collecting this kind of data. So I'm going to go over some of the things you should do and some of the things you shouldn't do in this video so that you can deal with those things quite happily. Now I used to work as one of those annoying people that stand on street corners with a clipboard trying to stop people as they come by to ask them questions. Like as a sort of market researcher, I used to work for a market research firm. And oh, it was a, a very demoralizing job, I must say, because you stand there and someone comes by and it's like, excuse me, could you? And they just blank you. Excuse me, could you? Uh, no, they're not interested. And it's really hard to get people to stop. But every now and then you would get somebody to stop. It's like, yes, finally got them to stop. And you go through your questions, you get halfway through your questionnaire and they keep looking at the watch and they just don't have enough time and they're gone and no, you've got a half finished questionnaire. What do you do with that? Well, technically you should throw it away. We did fill out a couple ourselves, just to finish it off. I'm sure no one will notice, but that's very naughty and you shouldn't do that. But part of the issue here is that when you design a questionnaire, you should make it as quick and easy to fill out as possible. You don't want people to take a long time over it. Um, so the first tip I'm going to give you when it comes to designing questionnaires is you should use tick boxes. So if you're going to ask somebody how old they are, rather than leaving a space for them to write the answer, you should give tick box options so they can just tick the appropriate one. We'll come on to that age thing in a, a bit actually because there's a few other things we could say about that. But the second important tip is you shouldn't ask leading questions. If you say don't you think Manchester United is the best football team in the world ever? That's a leading question because it expects a certain answer. The questionnaire is the questioner rather is clearly hoping you're going to agree with them. And that's bad form when asking questions. You should leave the respondent free to say whatever they want. So it's much better to say, what do you think of Manchester United? If they like them, they can say they like them. If they don't, they can say they don't. So don't ask leading questions, keep them open. And the third thing is use ranges. Now this is what I was talking about before with the age thing. The slight problem of asking somebody how old they are is that if you just have individual ages, if your tick box is to say 20, 21, 22, 23, etc., then somebody might not want to tell you exactly how old they are and they'll probably just lie and tick something, usually on the lower end. Um, but let me give you an example of what you could do to get around this problem. So, uh, actually just give me a second to write out the question and then I'll talk about it. All right, here we go. So here's an example question. How old are you? <clears throat> so rather than having to say exactly how old they are, they can just pick a range. If they're in the 20s, they can just tick 20. If they're in the 30s, they can just tick the 30 to 40 range. So this is a much better way because then people tend to be much happier. If they tick the 30 to 40 box, if they're at the top end, they can sort of pretend in their head, oh yes, I'm closer to 30, really. But it, you're still getting accurate answers from people, that's the important thing. Now there are a couple of problems with this, actually. I've made a couple of deliberate mistakes here. Hopefully you can see what they are if you look at it carefully. If you were 20 years old, which box do you tick? Because this goes 10 to 20, but this goes 20 to 30, you could tick either box and the person would be like, ah, I don't know which box to tick. So to avoid this problem, this problem incidentally is called overlapping boundaries. Yeah, you've got a boundary here and a boundary here and they overlap and you don't want that. So to avoid that, <clears throat> you want to just extend the ranges by one. So typically you might go from naught to nine, let's say here, to avoid the overlap with that one. And then you can go from 10 to 19, 
22, 29, etc. And now I don't have any problems of overlapping boundaries. There is another problem here though, maybe you've spotted it. If you're older than 39, 40 or more, you've got no box to tick. Now you need to make sure whoever's answering your question there can tick a box. They've got to have an option somewhere. So in this case, you would want to stick another box on. I mean, you could have more ranges here, or you could just stick 40 plus or something, and then that includes anybody who's 40 or older. So there's just a couple of things to bear in mind when doing your questions. A um, couple of other things I'd like to show you, so I'm going to write up a different question, and then we'll talk about that. All right, so here's my second question. How often do you exercise? And here are the answers I've given them to tick. Do they exercise a lot, quite a bit, or not much? Now again, there are some problems with this. I've done this deliberately. These answers are what we call subjective. Different people will interpret them differently. Quite a bit might mean one thing to one person and something very different to someone else. In terms of how often you exercise, if somebody exercises a few times a week, they might say, yeah, that's quite a bit. For someone else, once a fortnight might be quite a bit. Depends how often you're used to exercising. So you don't want to use subjective terms like this. If you're asking a question, you generally want to give ranges involving numbers wherever possible. So let me give you an example here. Rather than having words like that, we want to use numbers. But in terms of how often, you must specify the time period. Yeah. So I can't just say, one to two, three to four, five to six, etc. Because how often do you exercise one to two times a week, a month, a year? It doesn't say. So you must specify the time period. So you might say how often, if we insert this in here, per week do you exercise? And then it makes a bit more sense. Although again, I've got a couple of problems here. What if somebody doesn't exercise at all? You need to make sure they can tick a box. So you need to start with zero really here. Yeah. How often per week do you exercise? No times. And then you could go with one to two, that would be fine. Three to four maybe. And you could do the other ones. So five to six. And then for the fitness fanatics, you could do a seven plus or something for those people who exercise every day and sometimes twice a day. So just bear those things in mind when you're designing these questionnaires. Use tick boxes, try to give ranges if possible, make sure you specify time periods if you're asking how often somebody does something. Don't ask leading questions um, and hopefully you'll get some good results at the end of it all. So that's how you design the questions for your questionnaire. You use these, you go around, you collect all your data and then the next step following on with this, you'd you compile this data into tables and use it to produce bar charts and pie charts. So check out those videos if you want to learn how to do that. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths.